Well, everybody, please welcome <laughs> Jacob Craner. So I had to start it there. I love getting in with a laugh. How are you, mate? Thanks for coming on. Oh, yeah. Sorry for, sorry for jumping the gun on your intro. <laughs> no, I'm doing fantastic. Man, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you on. How have you been? How's the last few weeks been uh, with this massive game dropping? Oh man, it's been, it's been awesome. I need to catch up on, like I said before the interview, I've had some and stuff going on, some work, some training that's been yeah. quite intense. How intense are we I talking, haven't, by the way? I mean, like not intense in a physical sense, but it's just squeezing like my brain like a lemon, which is great because, you know, you don't want to take classes or training to just get compliments and pats on the back right I don't wanna... <laughs> no. and it's no. a it is a hurdle to you know kind of um to get into that you know straight learning okay taking criticism okay applying okay redefining the what i'm doing really pay attention to you know what's being told to me and making sure i'm delivering on my critiques that are given to me so it's it's mentally taxing and of course it's emotionally taxing because it's it's acting so you're out there exposed you know you're trying to be mm. as a, authentic and real as possible and you know when something's your art like that it can be uh tough to just lay it out there for judgment being like hey here's my here's my art tell me what you think is <laughs> could be better or is wrong but you know daunting, that's the, yeah but that that's the that's the kind of thing you mentally prepare for or don't and then you get broken down and then you mentally <laughs> chasing yourself for uh the continued uh <laughs> onslaught of refinement that's sure i feel come. like i feel like actors are one of the most resilient groups of people because they're always being rejected they're always being oh, judged you know what i mean and tell you what i'm constantly building on that and learning on that and that is something that just uh that just veneer after veneer lacquered layer goes on year after year you know um, I don't think a lot of people start that way. I certainly didn't, didn't maybe some, you know, people start off with a good constitution. No, you were an audio but... engineer, right? Or still are. Uh, yeah, yeah. I do it from time to time, uh, being a yeah. freelancer when times get slow, maybe, maybe I'll, uh, I'll definitely be using whatever skills I can to pay the bills uh, once the uh, video games go on full strike. Yeah. So, um, I actually started off working in a voiceover studio. I went to recording school in Arizona called Conservatory of Recording Arts and Sciences came out to I'm um, a West Coast American West Coast baby so I had I went to the biggest job market on that wasn't New York because I'm like I can't I gotta stay semi close to home so I went went to LA came out here when I was like 19 and then just immediately Dude, that's young yeah <laughs> <laughs> shit yeah I look back on that now I'm like damn that's really young. way to go me <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, you know well, congrats for that yeah that's that's a big step for that that age yeah but you know also i think it it a couple things that uh not learning to um deal with stress properly mm -hmm. and all that some things came to the head came to a head throughout my like 20s and just growing up but i don't know it's all part of living you live <laughs> and you learn anyway where was i so i, I got a job at a recording studio um and they did mostly like primetime animation and uh, video games. The very first big project I was lucky enough to work on right out of school was dialogue editing for New Vegas, Fallout New Vegas. Oh, what a game, man. And uh, Shit. yeah, <laughs> that's insane. Just yeah. plugging away in Pro Tools, being like, all right, let me apply all my skill if I learned at audio school. So, and <laughs> so how does that work? What's the day to day like for that game? Uh, for, for me on that part, um, we would just get massive in some of the dialogue we would record at the studio there and we would just get massive massive spreadsheets similar to I how it works imagine. you just get a huge ass spreadsheet with thousands of lines of dialogue and Damn. um you know you're uh and that was before i i <laughs> figured out just keyboard macros or macro programs so i was Oh Green. no! And you know, to put it, plug it into the audio engine, Wise or uh, no, uh, whatever F mod. I forget what one of some of the other engine audio engines are called. I forget. But um, 
it has to have the very specific file name so it can, you know, plug into the engine correctly and play when it's supposed to. And uh, so <laughs> I was renaming all those, all those sons of guns manually. <laughs> Thousands of <laughs> lines of dialogue. <laughs> Perfect work for a green little intern, starry eyed and right. Like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> uh, so are you hearing the lines <laughs> as you're doing that from the voice actors? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, cleaning out pops and clicks. Yeah. And sometimes uh, we didn't have to worry about room noise or or, or room reverb so much then because uh, remote recording wasn't a thing up until. Of, of course, it was a thing. You had like ISDN and I think uh, actually it was just ISDN for a while. Until so now you have to. Out. Anyway. So now you have to actually worry about the reverb in some if some studios aren't treated properly. Yeah, or if someone's recording at home and maybe they're that's actually one thing that has been a nice thing to portmento into voice acting is I know that uh my audio setup is I know that my re- remote recording setup I don't have to worry about that as much cuz uh, I have cool. a foundational training is that. But at the studio I was just watching actors act and after a while, you know, that can become a uh a workshop or an acting class in itself. If you yes. know what I, if you know what to listen for and listen to, it's definitely not a replacement for actual acting training. No, no, Cause no, no. I definitely had to go looking for that because I fell for the thing. But I'm sure you also heard uh-huh. some, not to be rude to the act, but there no. was probably some bad renditions of voice lines along the way. You've got thousands of lines you're going through and I'm sure you can spot out the good versus the bad as well. Right. Oh, I mean, uh, maybe when I was when I was greener, maybe more so now when I was uh, greener, I was just like, everything know, enamored with like, wow, this yeah. is dialogue for a video game. <laughs> 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 I play those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So going back to, um, so then you're working at Vegas and then where does it go from there? Uh, working on New Vegas, Fallout. Mm-hmm. And then what's the next stage? The next stage would be um, there were a couple of uh, casting directors um, that I worked on projects with that, you know, to really took a shining to me after a while when I had to have, I got aspirations to voice acting. I'm uh, able to confide in them and let them know that that was something I was pursuing. So that was a, uh, so they, there was a show called Mix Master. It was a uh, anime dub. That was one of my first, uh, I just paid gigs as Mark Handler had me go in and voice a big blue monster or something that the protagonists were fighting. And then from there, we recorded uh, eventually a couple years down the line, we recorded a, uh, a Disney Junior show called Sheriff Callie's Wild West. And the one of the um, executive producer on there, or the main producer, is a huge music fan. So she was. That was the kind of show where each each uh, episode had a guest star. So she was a huge music head. So she was bringing in um, all of her favorite musicians and offering them roles if they wanted a guest star. So that's one of my few celebrity pictures I have is with Flea. He oh. had a broken arm from snowboarding at the time, <laughs> <laughs> and so he's in a sling. That's random. <laughs> and we recorded wow. like Iggy Pop. And um, one of the guys we were supposed to record was uh, country singer Dwight Yoakam. Something happened with his contract, and he was supposed to record this uh, character called Jethro Beaver, a mischievous beaver. And uh, his contract (laughs) got messed up. And before, they were doing um, scratch dialogue. So, you know, like maybe before the real actor comes in, they'll have another actor or production member come in and just temporarily 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 do the voice read the lines just yeah. so they exist in there and they can just plan stuff around it da, 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 da. so they knew that i was interested in or i was pursuing voiceover and they let me do that so i was like sweet and so when dwight yokum's contract got messed up they were like well You're here's your taft you. hartley we're just gonna go with you and <laughs> so what I was that beaver done... voice have you still got it in you let's see jethro jethro beaver yeah he was something like this He's just a mischievous beaver. You get back here, Sheriff Callie Dagnabbit. I can't imagine having and, uh, with that voice. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be and a different I was game. Havoc with that voice? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Embrace chaos by choice or by force. 
Hold on, can I? You spit in my face. <laughs> oh, I need to hear Havoc. Cause Sorry. I, I'm not, I don't see Havoc in you at all. Like, I, I don't believe it's you <laughs> speaking to you for the last, Tell, just can you do it for us so I can just know it's you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let me just get in the, the chaos realm will reign supreme. You will accept chaos by choice or by force. <laughs> Liu <laughs> Kang, what a pleasant surprise. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's... Man. Order will not serve... I don't know. Yeah, that's enough. Wow. Okay, it is you. <laughs> just checking. Yeah. Was just checking. No, so, yeah, so you did the beaver voice. And so when do you land Mortal Kombat? 2019, 2020? Yeah, that would have been uh, three-ish, three years ago. And if I remember correctly, uh, when were the first session? It was after I booked Halo Infinite, but I know it was before the pandemic. So I think my first session was before the pandemic. And then, so yeah, about three years ago. What did you do on Halo, by the way? I voiced the jackals, the Kigiar. Yeah, the oh. die human. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> really? And how yeah, many those, sessions was that? Those annoying little bastards with yeah. the shields always hiding behind the shields. Screw those but guys. No. I always thought whoever's doing the voice acting is incredible. Oh, that seriously. is one of the most seriously. fun times so fun. I've ever had. Yeah. Because yeah. I used to as a teenager, too, like... Youth group after ch uh, church youth group was whatever. But, you know, we were excited because the youth pastor let us bring our Xboxes there and we would, you know, do uh, Halo <laughs> Halo tournaments after Bible study and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you were a bit of a gamer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And so to be in a Halo game, man, that, that's a pinch me moment. Oh, man, I grew up on uh, Halo doing like local halo tournaments and all that had our you know tight niche in high school to do the you know nothing nothing that was really on an esports stage but you know for <laughs> yeah for like youth clubs and youth groups around the town and stuff they would just have video game competitions halo competitions keep the dang kids out of trouble <laughs> you know <laughs> so you were you were good oh yeah yeah but yeah. but uh, in, until at first it was because I was a screen looker. Oh you know, no, playing, Jacob! But then you can't I reveal know, that information. I know, but I was a kid. <laughs> I learned. We all make mistakes when we're young. <laughs> <laughs> My pride wouldn't let me once I realized how uh you know how how uh just scandalous that was and how dishonorable that was i wouldn't you know that's all right i wouldn't we live wouldn't. and we learn so then yeah, so yeah more, exactly <laughs> more, mortal Kombat one so what what was the first session like were you trying to discover this guy or had you already discovered what this character was like before you went in or mm. um i had no idea what it was for until i stepped in the session and then i promptly almost Whizzed myself once they told me what it was for, and <laughs> <laughs> but because like the audition copy, and uh, this is a common thing amongst video games. Not all video games do it, but some people do it. They will audition with copy that is not germane to the actual franchise, so it'll embody yeah. the the emotion or what they want the character to to be like, but it won't be any actual game dialogue due to like legal confidentiality or. So there, what there wasn't you. a Maybe bunch of case. A, in the script oh, uh, replacing no, the no. c's yeah yeah and in, in fact uh, i remember the 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 audition script mentioned something about like uh seoul the capital of korea so i'm like i don't even know what what game is gonna have you know be set in seoul korea but turns out not at all <laughs> <laughs> that was just for the sake of auditioning but um yeah but just like finding Havoc, they did have uh, artwork for him, which was like super helpful. Even back then, mm. you know, he was, it might have changed a little bit, but I remember seeing the first session, you know, his face or lack thereof. Um, oh, so that was there from the start. Yeah. 
from from what I remember, yeah. Um, yeah. So that might have helped you come up with the voice and the feeling yeah. of him. In fact, I do know that um, absolutely because I remember uh, one of the points of crafting the voice is that his, you know, his face gets dunked in molten metal or molten lava. I forget what it is in that in that cutscene, yeah. but uh, owie. So that was <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> that was known at the time of my force recording set session so we knew to you know yes give him a a, a, a rasp of sorts to you know to who was uh, it scorpion that did it did the job oh i forget i have seen the cut scene um yeah. on youtube but uh it's a great scene yeah and you know uh i deserved it i hate to <laughs> no i i know i should really be justifying havoc's actions because he's my character but yeah, it was Scorpion. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thought so. That when bastard. I, when I <laughs> think of uh, Scorpion, I immediately think of uh, what I also remember watching in two thousands is the Mortal Kombat movie and just the CGI of his palm opening up and <laughs> that's a that's what immediately popped in my head. <laughs> uh, so do you do you go back and watch those movies and and? get immersed in that world while you're doing the job or do you kind of stay away or how do you approach it? I definitely did revisit some Mortal Kombat lore once I booked it out of curiosity because I admittedly I was out of the Mortal Kombat game for a good bit. Um, Beyond that, just accessing my anger, like trying to see Mm. how I, I could channel my anger through Havoc as uh you know to make it sound real for him because you know we'd we'd be sounding different if we we're like i'm pretending to be angry whether then you're like actually pissed <laughs> you know what i mean so you were actually kind of pissed in the recording that's a i weird... mean trying to be as as wow. much as as much as possible yeah yeah i mean not like but... i'm gonna pour i'm gonna pour <laughs> salt in my coffee or da 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 but you know doing doing the mental and emotional prep work to be prepared to go to that place and be prepared to go to different shades of that place. So that must be exhausting, man. These are four hour sessions, I'm guessing. How do you sustain that over the four hours? Mm, I mean, um, a lot of the more intense stuff were two hour sessions, which was nice. Okay. Um, And again, that's much more manageable. Yeah. 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 Even for like vocal quality sake, it's a, it it's the best thing for both parties, both for vocal health and for you know keeping the character consistent. But yeah, it was definitely a mental Rubik's cube on some of the more expositionary sessions where you know you're just flushing out, uh, flushing out dialogue and scenes for you know pretty lengthy, pretty lengthy multi-page scenes, <laughs> which I do get ahead of time. I they did send them to me ahead of time, so that is solid because uh, then I can kind of. Put the puzzle pieces together instead of just right on the spot. How did you find the intro dialogues? Because they're really fun. Um, having oh, you know, man. coming against all these different characters, and I can't wait to see future DLC. I mean, that's going to be sick. Yeah, the the voice director uh, Dominic sent me uh, an email of uh, a compilation of Havoc's intro banter. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, the awesome part about it is how it plays against my opponents that like makes it really does. Yeah. <laughs> Cause otherwise it's just like half a, it's just like, you know, it's just half a thing. The awesome part about it is, is hearing uh, the responses or my responses to the, the other people to see how it finally plays to plays against. And it just makes me like giddy. Cause what a monster cast to be. <laughs> yeah. Did you think yeah. you were going to be up against uh, Megan Fox? <laughs> in <No>. a game <laughs> or Jean-Claude Van Damme for that matter oh, yeah, Jean- exactly yeah isn't that crazy yeah yeah <clears throat> and you know when I was uh, a wee little uh, assistant engineer and intern at this recording studio I worked with Kari Walgren for years on because she would come in for like everything like all sorts of cartoons and she's such a monster and she was always so kind. I say was because I haven't seen her in a while. I, you know, I don't get much opportunities to interface with yeah, these yeah, people now that I'm not working in a steady. But for any, anyone that wants to know, she's Katana and and uh, Melina. 
Yeah. Yeah. In this yeah. Game. So to uh you know, she's someone I respect a lot as uh just how nice and genuine she is as a person and of course for her talent. So it it uh feels pretty surreal to be on the same credit list. <laughs> Did you work with Steve Bloom as well? Um uh yeah. Yeah, Steve yeah. Bloom's a wonderful man. Yeah, I thought so. Talk about a guy that uh, uh just came in a ton. <laughs> Those two are working pretty, you know, they got a, getting a lot of work, aren't they? They're not short on work. Let's just no, say that. No, no. <laughs> and they uh and right rightfully earned. There's a there's a very good There's reason. a skill there, isn't there? There's a reason he's in the Guinness World Record books. Yeah. Uh but it's nice to yeah, also a very very wonderful man. Yeah. No, that's the main thing. I have I've never heard anything bad about him. Consummate professional. Yeah. So were you nervous about this role at all once you knew it was Mortal Kombat? Did did that get in your head at all? Uh no. Um not I was more of just uh elated, to be honest, because it's uh it's crossing one off of the the childhood bucket list as that's far good. as franchises I grew up with. Um but I did want to make sure I did my due diligence and um, just bring all I can and do do as good a job as possible and really bring the character to life the best way I knew how. So it was what, it, it was extremely important to me. Yeah, I can tell. What what um what else is on that bucket list in terms of franchises you'd like to be a part oh, of? Oh, that's a great question. I would love. <laughs> I would love to be a StarCraft ghost. That would oh, be awesome. you're a StarCraft guy. I knew you. <laughs> I you was a StarCraft I kid, knew yeah. It. yeah. Yeah, yeah, And I re- semi-recently g- finally got into StarCraft too, even though it's, uh, but it's in, been scratching the itch. And uh, and I love the classic, but the mechanics are just, you know, so much better in two. So I'm like, maybe it's time. Will you have a Warcraft what would be the... or anything like that? Oh, I played a lot of world of warcraft in high school <laughs> you're a blizzard it, guy it was I, a problem <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. just like my cousin loves blizzard games yeah starcraft warcraft um yeah did you ever awesome. do overwatch or did you ever do any of their other games diablo no oh D- diablo yeah 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 me and uh until and also up until uh, uh a couple of years ago me and my friend we would still you know all all nighter uh do speed runs on insane of diablo 3 <laughs> oh wow you know and just keep going up the hell modes just getting to the as hard as uh but i haven't delved into diablo 4 yet i was gonna say because you know. the first i think it was the first thousand that beat it on the extreme difficulty got got their name on the statue oh yeah did you yeah. hear about that yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. But, but I was going to say, did you go for that? No. <clears throat> Too busy with all this voice work, eh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the summer's been really good for me. And um, things are kind of like, but everything like ebbs and flows for me. I'm not at a point where it's like, uh, just like full bore consistent all the time. But it's it's uh, sustainable, of course. <laughs> But then, you know, it comes in like great chunks, disappears for maybe a little bit or maybe just a little lighter. And then, you know, it repopulates every. So it just comes in waves, which is good because then I get a little uh, reset, little break, a little time to uh, invest in my craft and training for myself. So it's yeah. a self-perpetuating growth cycle. Or How do you, I ask a few people this, how do you deal with, being out of work for a certain period of time and not knowing what's around the corner, you know, and being just confident mm. enough that you will get another job. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, well, part of that confidence comes with, uh, I've never not been like a contract or a freelance worker worker. Oh, you've always I been. Oh, yeah, okay. Ever since I right. moved out to LA. So there you go. Don't get me wrong. It bugged me. It, destroyed me for about a decade all of my 20s and now in my 30s i'm like it'll be fine i don't give a shit it'll be (laughs) (laughs) just utterly destroyed (laughs) Ah. 
jaded, resigned. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. You, uh, uh-huh. um, you, you just uh, develop your contact base, which is huge. What sort of yeah. contacts are we talking about? Casting directors uh, or directors or? Yeah, you know, uh, that a, sort lot of thing? Of, a lot of uh, video game directors, a good number of them, uh, I worked with a lot on New Vegas specifically and um, oh, uh, wow. the Dis- Dishonored stuff, Borderlands stuff. And now uh, we kind of, they were doing um, like script coordinating and session coordinating work while I was being an intern. And now they're full on, you know, successful, awesome voice directors. And they uh, see what I do and they know what I'm doing. We stay in contact and uh, we pat each other on the back. They throw me a bone. So that's good. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So having, having your, um, uh, your, your friends, your contacts, um, who are also industry professionals now and uh being very good at budgeting (laughs) also (laughs) helps um so going back to havoc what direction did you get from dom on this on this character or how did it develop over the two or three years okay so we started off with some and this is probably a good way we started off with like a sample cut scene Um, yeah and I and I do believe, because uh, it is known about Saido, correct? In uh, and and uh, its destruction. So I believe we started with that uh, talking about that about the destruction of Saido, and then for a while we moved into just intros and combat barks and stuff, and okay. then the later sessions moved back to more expositionary dialogue, and so. No one, I mean, you can watch the intros. No one likes interfacing with Havoc. He doesn't have lips. He's probably <laughs> spitting in everyone's face. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Yeah. Just, Shit. <laughs> I need probably to go trolls. back and see yeah. the ones with Johnny Cage. I feel like they were really funny. Oh, yeah. 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 Johnny Cage in this one is it's so awesome. But um, I think even though a lot of the can't combat barks and all that jazz, I just don't think they'd have the right amount of like body or you know like characters emotional presence if you didn't establish you, some kind of yeah you know you just be yelling like bah, bah, just be a loud angry guy you know there, there's got to be even something there's got to be something behind that you know that's what i meant to, that's what i meant to say yeah um so did you were you familiar with the Mortal Kombat's, I know you were familiar with the series, but had you played any of the games? Have you, you haven't played this game yet, have you? No, no, no. I haven't had time to um, <laughs> play this one. Um, yeah, like I said, I've been, I am interested in, in it again. Because, you know, sometimes you only have so much bandwidth. So, you know, I fall out of one franchise, get obsessed with Lord of the Rings for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> fall out of some franchise, get obsessed with Rome Total War for eight years, and then <laughs> <laughs> eight years. Okay, <laughs> I still play Rome Two Total War, but uh, I need to I play that, the... man. I've always wanted to play it. Oh man, it was the first game where that did an RTS how I, I wanted it, where it's just like I want like that in Supreme Commander, where it's just like I want like two thousand dudes on the battlefield just blood spraying everywhere yeah. and it's like yeah. finally yeah they okay you've, they i think you've right. convinced me yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's all it took. no it's rules and and if you like uh tactics in your game yeah and uh and uh then it'll it's it'll be great do you Plus, play you know, um uh, civil what is it civil do you know what i'm thinking of the uh, rts uh sir civilizations yeah yeah, yeah sid yeah. meyer one sid um, meyer sid meyer yeah, sid yeah. meyer civilizations I played a bit of that. I delved into that in the pandemic when they were given away for free. Um, Not as good as Rome. No, no, it, it's it's great, but it's just different because that's uh, um, and the Total War franchise does have a turn base. Um, uh, yeah, 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 a turn base mechanic too, but um, you don't have like the live battles. Like oh, so you prefer to you prefer the turn base? Game. Yeah, it's it's a sort of 
you know, stew on your decision making yeah. rather than yeah. the quickness of of the other or, stuff. Yeah. Or Stellaris is a really fun one because there is no turns and it's just a constant Stellaris. Yeah. It's a fun little uh galactic civilization sim. It's fun. <laughs> Stellaris. I've heard of it. Oh, this looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just have a good uh have Oh, this is really galactic. You weren't weren't lying. (laughs) Have a good CPU for it if you uh you know (laughs) play on all Mac settings. Oh, I was gonna ask you. You're the you're a PC nerd. Yeah. (laughs) You you really are, aren't you? You've got all the latest shit, right? Um, I as soon as the uh, graphics card price spike um kind of calmed down, I built a system. Uh, so. Because what have you got? What have you got? So I use a uh, I have a F- Ryzen 9 5950X, and I went with the flagship for uh, when I do audio work. Has uh, a lot of great multi core performance. Great for bouncing out. Great for having mixed sessions with just tons of tracks. So also, you prefer got- that over in- uh, over Intel. Uh, no, I'm not a fanboy for either, but you know, okay. uh, it depends on, um, I just spent hours and hours pouring over like benchmarks and for very yeah, specific yeah. scenarios and, uh, yeah. and you know, also every generation is different. So, um, you know, yeah. The, yeah, the yeah, next yeah. CPU I get might be an Intel depending on, uh, where the companies are at in their, okay in their development and you know, the, yeah. But so so I now you I... know I'm gonna have to when I build a PC next time I'm gonna have to tweak your ear for a little bit. Oh, dude, hit me up. Yeah, I love. I love uh, oh no, if I just had like all the money in the world, I would. <laughs> I would build custom water loops just for fun. And, uh, <laughs> I'm not a visual <sighs> artist, so I couldn't like make a one that looks like the frontier in Starfield or whatever. I couldn't make it, but I can make that tubing look pretty. I'd <laughs> Oh, so you could actually so you've built yours yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh um, Okay. And I'm not saying that that I have done uh custom water cooling, but once I do, I'm going to do it at some time and I know I'm just going to, you know. <laughs> not that I think that I need it, but just because it's so much fun. It just sounds like so much fun. And it um, looks pretty cool. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> but going back to I have 64 gigs of 3600 megahertz DDR4. I have a... Uh, uh, oh, no. For the, yeah. I this is 12. a beefy, beefy PC at the moment. Oh, uh, yeah. It's meant, <laughs> it's meant to, for hot, heavy audio workloads and also... Also gaming. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I put the 12 gigabyte... Um, EVGA for the Win 3 3080 in there. And then I probably won't upgrade and in, I'm wondering how you can I'm I'm understanding what you're saying, but some people might be going, what the fuck are these two talking about? These, <laughs> these words. Well, I won't I'm, go into the weeds. I'm trying to how we, how can we dumb it down, but also I want to hear the specifics. It's a tough one. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um I have I don't have the newest generation of NVIDIA graphics card, but I have the last generation yeah. and i have the the second from the top tier but no but that's that's good yeah, yeah. and how much storage I, I like to know everything yeah i've got um two m.2 ssds you you would need to have a lot of storage or not do you do things in the cloud or what, what are we talking here no 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 i have uh i have a good amount of storage i have uh my main drive has two terabytes um m.2 i have another uh one terabyte m.2 that's uh my dedicated um just project audio voiceover drive yeah and then i have just a gigantic slow eight terabyte spinning disc that i just auto back up everything to that's on just a. uh that's what i need so it backups like every single day um that's what i need you you need it probably more than me because you I'm can't just a afford file to. pack rat. I'm a file <laughs> pack rat. So, <laughs> and what I what games are installed? Losing my stuff. What games are installed on that console right now? On that um oh, PC? Heck yeah. Um. Well, I 
I got Starfield on there. That's been oh, interesting. Yeah. I got hey, I'm finally gonna play Halo Infinite at some point. Um nice. Uh let's see. I got Rome to Total War. And how many goats. hours would, would Rome have? Uh Steam tells you right on the front page, you know, which is <laughs> that's like, what oh, I mean. Boy. Yeah. So <laughs> I actually caught it not too long ago and I have a thousand hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice, man. Nice. <laughs> respect over like 12 years but still nah, nah, whatever nah. i'm not trying to respect. well let's see i got uh mm, got supreme commander forge alliance i got mech warrior fives mercenaries because i used to play a lot of mech warrior mercenaries as a kid and when nice. i found out that came out i was like what i got anno 1800 that's fun city skylines what uh, city skylines uh, like it's kind of like uh sim city but uh okay a little different and um they're coming out with a new one next month uh, that'll be it's been kind of the go to for people who are looking for a semi realistic city simulation and uh it achieves that through heavy modding um but uh, uh okay. oh and mount mountain 2 blade bannerlord i've been having a lot of fun with that game oh that one's great that one's kind of like a strategy but also first person battles that's another one where it's it's like a medieval feudal simulator you go around take castles can establish your own yeah. kingdom it has an awesome economy system and then you I'm get to be on the ground and stab people in the face so maybe maybe they <laughs> haven't <individual> ha character. <laughs> maybe they have done this but i feel like like a total war rome game like that but game of thrones world oh sure yeah or lord of yeah. the rings or you know I oh, feel yeah. like, why haven't they done this? Sure. And, you know, in some regard, Bannerlord kind of crosses that threshold with the the palace intrigue and all the, of course, there's a story behind it and some, but you can also be a singular character in a battle with, like, a 2,000 other individual models and, in, you know, wow. one. you can be one soldier in, like, a shield wall or an archer in a da-da-da-da-da. But wouldn't that be boring? The ladder. Uh no, they they actually they throw enough uh mechanics in there and uh wow. I don't know what's the <laughs> what's the telltale or something like that. The developer I think they did a really good job. Anyway, I took I took us on a huge tangent <laughs> off of Mortal Kombat. So how how have you found your career so far? I'm curious. How where are you at now? How do you feel looking back? What are your ambitions? I'm I I feel very grateful and uh proud of what i've been able to achieve and um you know there's always more to learn there's always ways to grow and as long as you're just trying to grow into the full of your potential is you know sky's the limit so um i will uh i foresee myself you know continuing in video games definitely that seems to be what i book the most is video games which is uh why do you think that great. is <laughs> why do you think that is um let's see part of it from a technical standpoint is i understand uh just the production just how they're created and especially the audio side because you know i started off in that world and got got to see how the sausage was made essentially and um so when i started doing them regularly you know, as an actor, seeing a video game script for the first time as an actor, I'm like, oh, you know, well, I know exactly how this is because this is like the millionth video game script I've seen. I know, you know, exactly how to approach this and, and, and handle this and why it's formatted, formatted the way it is. And but so part of that is my background. Part of it is I just, you know, grew up with video games and I love them when I get to play them. <laughs> it's just uh, an awesome format for storytelling and interactive yep. storytelling. 100%. Like, and, and with, uh, you know, immersion is always going to be, keep progressing as far as, you know, video games becoming immersive. It's only going to become even more immersive. And with that, the stories are going to be kind of become more immersive and uh 
and what a fun place to get to just play and explore and create new worlds. It's it's such an awesome area as a creative outlet. It's such an awesome canvas to be able to, you know, express yourself on. Oh, I think it's the best in the world. Oh yeah. Best format in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Not and of course not just a a voice artist, like a visual effects artist, you know, a sound designer and stuff. There's a man, there's just uh so much talent and expertise that just goes into yeah, I know. So, a few more before I let you go. I, I want to know: yeah. is there anything? Is there anything that people might not know about that behind-the-scenes audio world mm. within gaming that you can tell us? Like, give us some insight. Like, maybe people don't know about this, or there's a misconception about this, or you know what I mean? So, editing video game audio, people. They have, you know, they have moisture in their mouths. They have, like, spit in their mouth. And, you know, sometimes when they're recording, you get a lot of, sorry, all everyone with misophonia out yeah, there yeah, watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, there's a lot of unpleasant sounds in there sometimes, depending on the, and, you know, that that's not, that's just the human voice. You're going to, a microphone is going to pick up things that your ears do not when you're naturally listening to someone. So, in order to counteract that, um, all those lines of dialogue you hear have to be cleaned of all the mouth noises, all of like sometimes uh, um, really what they call nose knocks. Just every time you get a consonant to most a P pop, as they call it, every time you uh, get to on on mic and blow up a, a P, it'll you know, blow up the mic and cause too much low end to go. And all of that needs to be cleaned out. And there are programs that can um, remove those things for you. But sometimes, uh, more than half the time, I would say that comes at the cost of it uh, adding, you know, digital, what they call digital aliasing, basically to remove a click from an audio file, a algorithm and a denoiser it can't just take it out or else there'd be silence there'd be a gap there it has to put something in there so you don't notice it nothing in that space and so sometimes that can cause um an unwanted digital noise that just sounds really weird and you know it doesn't sound nice when they put the final processing on it and level level all these things because they have to level all these to a a loudness spec so you're not listening through a video game and one line is like, oh, I can barely hear that. And then another I, line's like, but, oh, shit, that's like blowing up my ears. Can you tell me, sorry to cut you off, what some no, no, games no. are louder than others, though, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it varies um, Okay, to my to my. Knowledge. Like most are standard because I'm recording games yeah. all the time. Most are standard. But then you get the occasional yeah. game that might be a little bit too quiet or a little bit too... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And especially among, like, indie developers, you know, and uh, people that, like, I don't know for certain, but I would assume that a lot of um, big publishers and developers have standards for uh, all their titles or at least at least franchise-specific. Like, you know, all of Uncharted is always, like, this is the spec sheet for it. This is how the audio always is for Uncharted. Yeah, but um, uh, yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah, but you know, it, yeah. it, it 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 does vary. But yeah, a lot of a lot of those lines sometimes you can't always rely on those fancy tools. So all <laughs> a lot of those lines have to be cleaned out manually, mouse click by hand in what's called a spectrogram that called that looks at the waveform of the audio file in a uh, a kind of fun mosaic if you will and different colors are different amplitudes of different frequencies and wow. no one knows what the hell i'm talking about so. no 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 i, I it's fascinating do, <laughs> do, do lip smacks like that sort of thing is that a thing as well or is that that's oh, a bit yeah. different yeah yeah, yeah 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 and the careful thing is uh sometimes because sometimes and i'll do this do it as part of a performance like uh when you're not sure about something you know 
uh, or at least when I'm not sure about something, sometimes I go, eh, you know, do a, you wouldn't yeah. want to remove that part of it because that's, well, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's so what I mean. It's, yeah. It's, it's circumstantial. Um, yeah. So, yeah. If you, if you ever hear video game dialogue and you ever notice, I, this thing sounds clean as a whistle. I don't hear a single <laughs> or <laughs> then we're going to yeah. thank you. Tip, Personally. Tip your hat, tip your hat to your <laughs> to your local dialogue editor. <laughs> and then, last one on this: How many audio people would be involved in a game like Mortal Kombat, for example, or Halo? Oh man, um, are we hmm. talking hundreds, or not that many? Maybe twenty, fifty. What what sort of numbers are we looking at? Uh, are you a lot? I would, yeah. um, uh, including like pre-production. Um, yeah and and you know people scheduling talent you know people finding talent and people creating the audition process for that talent so yeah, yeah. quite quite a few people i would say over definitely over 100 folks for uh damn and you know maybe maybe the post production audio side uh, maybe that's 20 something people maybe it's uh three times that but yeah it's a uh, yeah, triple A triple A titles are uh they're huge. Yeah. <laughs> and so they, well, you know, so if it was an indie title, could uh, I'm guessing there's like one or two people, right? That, that that seems like a lot of work for one or two. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. That's that's why when, you know, I think that's something we often don't think about with an indie developer is uh you know, sometimes it is just that one or two person team and they're you know, punching the clock at the wee hours of the night, working on their baby. It's and they have a lot on the line because they don't have a publisher. Perhaps they don't have a publisher to uh, to uh, be their financier. Mm -hmm. Which you know, and that also becomes a challenge of itself because if you do have a publisher, then they're probably expecting you to meet production deadlines of uh, and uh, you know sometimes true, if you reach snags. Snags. There's a give so and that, take. That's its own. Yeah. yeah, that's its own set of challenges. Yeah, yeah. Keep keep that in mind. We're playing in indie games. It's, it's a very good like likelihood that that was uh, that's that's someone's baby. You know. Hey, at the end of the day, some of these indie games end up being the best games of the year, man. Oh man, They're so I, good. I I forgot to mention Sons of the Forest. And oh yeah, you hear that. I've yeah, never, yeah. I've never even played that genre, so I was even completely new to the survival horror genre. And yeah, that's a small team, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I think they're based up in uh, British Columbia, if I'm not. Uh, ah, mistaken. okay, but well, yeah, that came yeah. out earlier this year or last I believe, year. I believe it was in beta in early year, and uh, I'm not sure when they had the full release. Uh, yeah, it's been full maybe release. it's not out. Fully, yeah. yeah, I know they keep uh, rolling out patches for it. Mm. So I want to know: Is it true you're classically trained as a singer? Yes, I remember. In <laughs> Can you perform school, for us right now? <laughs> Ave Maria. Oh wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna tear up. <laughs> uh, no, um Oh, can you do that is that's tough. When, you know, that, yeah. Oh man, that is No man, uh choir is how I got out of uh doing PE in high school. I I took <laughs> PE online in high school. <laughs> uh, wow. How do, I, how do you do that, I imagine? Especially in the aughts. They found a way. PE and online. I'm, I lied my I'd teeth. I've heard it. that. Yeah. Because so it was so I could do uh because choir was actually fun for me and I didn't have to do any crap I didn't want to. I could just sing. So <laughs> sing and, and cool. do uh do theater. So yeah. Yeah. So that's that's where that, that comes from, the the singing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we we did uh it was jazz trained too, but there was definitely some for state competitions where I had to learn German and uh, sing in German. I can't do that now, but <laughs> wow, 
but uh, singing Joe, you know, you know, learn like classical pieces by uh, yeah, all the. Oh, so you were you were traveling around doing this? Oh no, just to, like the the state competition for, or or yeah, yes, yeah. So you were was, competing. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. For for uh, on a academic level, yeah. All right. Wow. Yeah, and I got second place. Nice. More year. Nice. Who beat you out, the bastard? Ah, someone who sang in German better than I. <laughs> no. German exchange student? No. <laughs> so maybe we can get Havoc singing in Mortal Kombat 2, do you reckon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. As a little Easter egg. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> let's see uh, do i know do i know any classical songs off the top of my head i haven't done it for years but um uh let's see <clears throat> this is a minuet by buck yes we have classical music in the chaos realm <clears throat> Maybe that's Mozart. <laughs> that's the chaos of it. <laughs> oh man, my cheeks are sore now. I'm laughing. Oh, that's funny. Oh, got it. Um, is there? And then last one. Is there a chance that Mustang, uh, that Mustang, that mustache is coming back? <laughs> the mustache, because you had that mustache, man. Oh heck and, yeah! And buddy. now it's you know, gone. What was the decision making on that? Oh, sometimes I just get a mustache mood. You know, <laughs> sometimes you just feel like a stud, and you're shaving, and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna leave that. Yeah. You get to you get to stay, little buddy. Welcome to the welcome to Big Dog's house for a while, and then he and then he gets sick of uh, you know trimming it up and combing it all the time, and you know. Yeah. So, all right. I have good uh, genetics, so I'm not losing my hair anytime soon. So, oh, that's good. Hey, is there anything you want to say to the fans that have tuned in today, mate? Yeah, you guys. Rock, I have received so much love about Havoc and so many people who are just very talented artists. And uh, as, as someone who has a hard time drawing stick figures, it's like to take the time to really uh, draw Havoc and send it my way is, uh, it's, it's, it's just beyond... Uh, beyond gratitude and beyond words just, just so many talented people out there and um yeah yeah to all the all you guys playing mortal Kombat out there just have a blast it looks like a blast i can't wait to dig into myself uh maybe you'll battle me online <laughs> you'll probably school me one of these days and uh yeah keep the keep the chaos in the game and you know just uh when you go out into the, the world it's uh it's free to be kind so go out there and leave the chaos to havoc you know <laughs> <laughs> thank you man and we can find you on uh twitter instagram anywhere else yeah oh, sorry x yeah you can <laughs> yeah you can find me on x at jacob craner um <laughs> And then on uh, Instagram, I'm at jacobcraner.vo. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Follow me there. Hit me up. Um, I, keep the I art don't... coming. I love the Havoc art. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, keep it coming. If you uh, draw some, don't be shy. Send it my way. Um, if you do anything, if you make a song about Headache, Havoc, I'm a, I'm a, and maybe is a he is a headache to some people. <laughs> if you like make a metal song, make electronic, I don't know if you do anything, even if you're just uh, yeah, if you're just a fan, hit me up and talk about it. I don't get on every day, but when I do, I try to find everyone who's interacted with me and at least acknowledge them. So because I it it means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. It really does. Um, uh, a lot so, of these, a lot of 
such a great community. So thank you all. Awesome, man. And if I and haven't before... gotten back to you yet, I will. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, and last one, can Havoc uh, round this one out? Can he say something to Dan? Can he berate Dan? Can he, uh, you know, one last time? Slave of order. You just sit there podcasting all day, in day in out, on YouTube wherever. You do not know the freedom of anarchy, the freedom of chaos. I will teach you. I will let you, uh, you know, come over to the chaos room and maybe we'll have a barbecue and. Uh, we can, if you're a cannibal, we can rip off my arm and we can barbecue. It's going to grow back. So <laughs> meat for life, baby. But anyway, <laughs> stay chaotic. <laughs> Sorry, chaotic. <laughs> that went off the rails, but in a good way. In a good way. I, I generally do. Um, <laughs>